Today, we gather as an online community, united by one voice, to worship and praise our Lord and Saviour. Good morning, folks. It is so good and such a privilege for me to be with you here. You know, when I'm asked to share God's word, I get so energized. I don't know what to do with all the energy. And it all comes from what I'm speaking about today. Because of the second privilege is I can speak on my favorite part of the gospel, God's Holy Spirit. Amen. You've got to believe it. And also, a privilege is to share this communion with you. Communion, Lost Supper, the table, whatever you like to call it. A sacrament. What does a sacrament mean? It's Greek for mystery. It's a mystery, friends. Always has been and always will. Anyway, let's get on. I'm going to be speaking from John 14 through several verses. I'm not reading the passage out because I'm going to dip in in and out as we go through what I want to say. So let's start off with a prayer. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindling us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O oh God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct our hearts to be faithful, grant that that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. And all these people said, Amen. You know, we believe in the Holy Spirit, don't we? If you don't, come and see me afterwards. We baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The word John uses, John uses to define the Holy Spirit is paraclete. Paraclete is the one who comes alongside of you. And when Jesus left the cross, he left paraclete to be with us. The Holy Spirit is like an attorney who stands for us in court. The Holy Spirit is like a specialist who is called in to solve out a problem. The Holy Spirit is like a soldier who arrives to replenish the front line. And on the eve of his departure, Jesus says to his disciples, I will ask the Father to give you paraclete, the one alongside of you, my Holy Spirit. What a blessing. The world cannot accept, he, see, cannot accept him because they can't see him. They don't know him. But he lives in you and I once we've accepted him. So let's have a look. The Holy Spirit is God with us. This last month I have visited several people in hospitals of various ways and things. And the one guy I went to see, he was kind of in despair. And he said, I think I've lost contact with a man upstairs. How many people talk like that? Eh? Can you say a prayer for your friend upstairs? And, but that is fine. He's recognizing something, isn't he? And, and I said, I know, I feel your sadness. But sometimes, you know, we need to get a grasp of God, not kind of pretend and let him grip us and see us through whatever it is we're going through at the time. And I said to him, I'm counting on God to see you through this illness. And with a smile on his lips, he said, I sure hope that's true. <laughs> God is with us. Now, when we know that, we've got to imagine that God is still with us and around us. But often we feel that we can't fathom it. But God is still with us when we have those feelings. The psalmist said it best in Psalm 137. Is where, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guard me. Your right hand will hold me fast. 
Psalm 137. And then just add to that, John 14. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. That's the Holy Spirit speaking. So whatever your earthly family may be like, I'm here to tell you today that God is your father, my father. Jesus Christ is our brother and the Holy Spirit is our counselor. There's got to be an amen to that. Woo, you're a quiet crowd. <laughs> we belong to the family of God. You see, there are no orphans here today. There's not a single orphan here today because the Spirit bears witness with us and tells us that we are the children of God and we belong to God's family. Then we are heirs, aren't we? We are heirs to everything that God is. Co-heirs with Christ. Verse 16 and 17. You have an inheritance. You are in the Father's will. How often in love somebody dies and we're wondering, I wonder if I'm in the will. Hey? Huh? Well, I can tell you today, you don't have to check. You are in the Father's will. Of that, there's no doubt. And that's by the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Secondly, the Holy Spirit is wisdom for us. Hmm? Little story. Uh, 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 there, there's a pilot. There's a businessman. There was a reverend. And there was a, a boy scout. And they're all in this plane. And suddenly something seems to go wrong. And the pilot comes dashing in. He said, there's a problem with a plane. It's going to crash. We've got to get in now. There's three parachutes and the pilot said as I'm young and I'm needed to fly planes and I've got a family waiting at home for dinner he said I'm grabbing a parachute and he grabbed one and he jumped out the plane and the business executive he said well as I am very important man and important in government and, and, and if something happened to me it would be a loss to the world and he grabbed and he jumped out the plane and the reverend the minister said to the little boy the boy scout he said son I've had my life. I've seen it all. You're still young. You're just starting. So rather you take the parachute because you need to live. And the little boy smiled and he said, Rev, don't be worried. He said, the executive grabbed my backpack. <laughs> Two people only interested in their own lives and one interested in someone else. Where do we stand? Are we interested in other people's lives? Because that's what the Holy Spirit wants from us. He wants us to be interested in other people's lives and other people's goings on. Verse 26. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach us many things. Think about that. Did you have a favorite teacher at school? I think we all did. I tried to think back, but it's so many years ago, I couldn't remember who they were. But we all had a favorite teacher at school. See, great teachers wake us up to great possibilities. Great teachers enlighten us to the truth of the world. Great teachers give us tools to carry on and do the things that we should be doing. The Holy Spirit is a good teacher, a great teacher, and we need to listen. And, and I ask, has your education really made you truly wise? I mean, your school education, has it really made you wise? Has your education made you a friend of good causes? Has your education made a good, some good Samaritan out of you? Can you see the love in a little child? I just love when we, we, we go for breakfast in a, a morning. We, we go to spares because it's the cheapest breakfast you can get in the city. Four bucks for a full breakfast. Try it. And I sit there and I see dad's coming along and with a little child. And just this last Saturday, the little child just sat in front of him looking and he just kept kissing him. And I thought, wow, that is so great. That child just loves his dad and is so interested in him. And that's how we should be with the Holy Spirit. Do we enjoy being alone? Can you spend time alone? Do you believe in the dignity of labor? Can you look into a mud puddle and yet see the blue sky? Can you look into the night up in the sky and see beyond the stars? Is your life linked with the infinite? Is wisdom more than facts for you? Figures and formulas 
Wisdom is discernment. We all need discernment. And discernment comes through the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Wisdom is truth. The right truth at the right time for the right reason for the right person. So simple. In James 1, 5, he says, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God. God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him or her. So simple, isn't it? Huh? You know, with every oath in the gospel, there is power available saying you can. You remember we say uh, uh, we, we, we ought to love our enemies. The gospel says you can. We ought to forgive. The gospel says you can. We ought to serve the least. The gospel says, you can. The Holy Spirit gives us a passion for the least. If we haven't got a passion for the least. Might be struggling, we haven't got the Holy Spirit. We ought to live a Christ-like life, and the Holy Spirit guides us into the Christian life we should be living. Why say ought without the power of saying, our knowledge of saying, I can. Not ought, it's I can. Another little story. It's a little boy and he went with his dad and they went on a camping trip and they found the space where they wanted to be and the dad was putting up the tent and the little boy was making the fire and everything. And, and as he was doing that, there, there was a big rock a little bit away from the fire. And he thought that big rock will be just the place to put the kettle. So he started trying to push the big rock towards the fire. But he couldn't. He couldn't move. It was too big for him. Eventually his dad looked at him and the little boy was kind of crying. He said, what's wrong? He said, well, I'm trying to move this rock and I can't get it to move. He said, have you tried all your resources? And the little boy said, I've tried every resource there is. And the father said, you didn't ask dad. Think about it. How often are we trying to do something and we don't ask our Father? That's a resource for each and every one of us. We continually wreck our brains. We wrestle with problems. We search for solutions. We jump to uh, 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 conclusions to sort things out. And a certain group of us will start bending the system, bending the rules, rocking the boat, flying off the handle. Some people are good of splitting hairs, of twisting things around, all because we don't have the wisdom to ask our Heavenly Father through His Holy Spirit for His answer to our problems. You know, as you push against heavy loads of life, have you asked the Holy Spirit? So simple. Sit down and say, Lord, I can't push this rock anymore. Can you help me? And as you wade through the deep, grief of whatever it is that's bothering you at that time have you asked the holy spirit to comfort you and as you try and make difficult decisions have you asked the holy spirit to counsel you lord what must i do where must i go where can i find the answer and as you seek your way along the problem and the road of life have you asked the holy spirit to guide you he's ready to help he will carry us through. In a few moments, we're going to join together in the, the, this incredible privilege of what we call communion or the table or the sacraments. When I say sacrament, people go, <gasps> sacrament? Sacrament is Greek for mystery. That's all it is. It's a mystery. We'll never, ever discover why this was all done. Started 2,000 years ago, and it has still been done today on the increase mystery a great thanksgiving as we pray pour out your holy spirit as we gather here and by your spirit make us one with christ one with each other one in mystery one to all the world thank you jesus bless you for your word join us now as we gather together around this table thank you jesus amen We pray that you would have a great week knowing that God your Father is with you every step of the way.